Hello and welcome to Kinbo Shisumo, where Nick, a Bonsuke in the books, some history made in some sort of way, but uh, how are you feeling regardless? I'm feeling great. Terano Fuji did exactly what we wanted him to, and then now is the eternal question of, does he stay or leave? The question that will never go away, I guess? I don't know. I mean, so, like, let's talk about this. You and I talked about, I mean, not just you and I, I think this was the talk everywhere, but... The idea that he wanted 10. So he's got it now. For the first week of this tournament, through eight days, I think everybody in the sumo world was talking about Zensho Yusho, 15-0 undefeated final championship, and was in awe. That didn't happen, um, and he it took him a playoff win to get this done. On the last day, a playoff win over Taka no Show, and at 12 wins, which... Um, I actually uh, had the opportunity to uh, cover this final day with the guys at Sunday Morning Sumo Show, um, which is awesome. Definitely go over and check out their YouTube channel um, and join their Discord because you're going to get some very good technical breakdowns of what's happening on a dohyo. Um, but so as an aside, they brought up a good point, which is that uh, Kiseno Sato kind of talking smack or whatever says that 12 wins is not a you show. Right. Like especially when you're at Yokozuna is like 13 is the minimum you should be getting. So that's a lot of prelude for me to say, Nick, like, where does this put Teru's legacy? This is in the record books 10. Um, but is he dwarfed at all by how he's kind of like skating over the line at the end here? Honestly, I don't think so. Um, the losses that he took this time. The only one that was weird is probably Takanosho, to be honest. He just had like a really, really good tournament. But Onosat, actually, even Onosato, he probably shouldn't have lost to that one. And Kotozakuru got to beat the streak of <laughs> no Ozeki except for Takakesho having ever beat him. But honestly, 12 and 3, like, I don't, I think his reputation's obviously still very solid. And it's hard to put myself in the mind of somebody like, like that, where will he see this and be like, I think I could do it one more time. I'm with you, especially because so like, OK, you said a lot of things which were super good. So I want to just like touch on one of them first is um, Koto Sakura, uh, Goose and JJ, the Sunday morning sumo show guys um, were bringing up that how important that was that Koto Sakura got that win because while he still hasn't gotten his U show, which we can talk about either later or another time or whatever, um, he he now has a win against the reigning Yokozuna which is a big credential builder. So like the stakes were high for him to get that win. So I think like you're saying that can be excusable for Terano Fuji, especially because Porto Sakura is good, you know, um, but to to get rid of that goose egg and move forward, that's really important. Um, and then Onosato, like you said, while he had this kind of like disappointing tournament at nine and six, still got a special prize. And like, you know, this we've seen this happen, right? Like there's a massive hangover for a young guy on his first promotion into the Sanyaku. And after a first you show all the added press responsibilities, you have different things that are happening in your, uh, Hey, uh, and things like that. So, but still like, that's a big loss. But like you said, and then I don't know, the other loss is Takanosho who was running in the running for this. This is who he had to beat. And he sort of expunged that he, he redeemed himself by beating Takanosho in the playoff, I guess. Right. Yeah, and I think I do think the conversation would have been different. Like Takano Show, what a year, year and a half ago, versus Takano Show now. Sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I would. This is kind of like what you've talked about a few times, where it's like this is, I think, a solid ending. It was a little bumpy, but he got it. And then just to be like ride off and be like, just leave on a win. You know, and and he's there's he's not going to like you know what I mean like. All of us have been talking about, I mean, I say all of us, I don't know. Uh, the people that I uh, sort of like circle the drain with in the YouTube community of sumo fans, um, everyone seemed to have been talking, especially about Zen Show You Show and Ride Off Into the Sunset, but now still like he's got his 10. Um, I don't think he's going to because the um, the council wrote him a blank check and because there's no one in the wings to succeed him. I think they'll let him sit out two, three tournaments and then come back for another final hurrah, which I guess maybe then he actually is healthy. But I don't know. He He's talking about how he can't really train the way he used to. And so I just think his muscle mass is going to continue to degrade and it's harder and harder. I, I don't know. Um, what do well, you he still about? needs that hip surgery that he's been putting off. No, I know. 
And and so like we saw Takanosho put off surgery for like a year and a half and then finally got it. Uh, I believe last tournament was his first one back after getting the surgery. But now this one, we've seen the bounce back. Like he actually feels good, you know? Yeah. Uh huh. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, no, I was going to say like, yeah, I, I agree. I don't. I don't think you get to be where Tiran Fuji is, especially given his record, if you're willing to just walk away like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and so whatever. And and like you and I said, so Kisuno Sato can say what he wants about there. I mean, he didn't say this specifically about Tiran Fuji per se, I don't think. But um, like no one can deny Tiran Fuji's 2021 and the fact that his 2021 came after his rise back through the ranks after devastating injury and the way he dominated Sumo in that stretch. Um, so I think no one's questioning it. They might be frustrated that he's quote unquote hanging on too long, but no one, no one has stepped up to challenge him for the crown really, you know, and you brought up, I I do want to get, so uh, two things I want to talk about before we get out of this segment is, um, how do you feel 10, uh, what what do you think 10 you show says about a legacy? Where does that put Teru? But also I want to touch on a point that when we were just watching Sumo, you brought up a great point that, um, we it looks like there's no one to succeed him right now and we're in our wild west phase where anyone can win a U show and stuff like that but you just said something offhand that i thought was really smart which is that like Hoto Zakura and Hoshoryu are their stats are probably going to get a lot better once Teru walks away like then all of a sudden there's going to be a vacuum that they are probably primed to fill um now they haven't yet so that might be where some people are still questioning or whatever but how do you how do you feel about those two points? One, where does this put Teru if he did walk away right now? And two, is this fear of the next generation not picking up the gauntlet just because Teru's not gone? Like, would would that self-correct on its own? So I do still think that putting Teru Nafuji at 10 Yusho wins is still... I mean, it puts him at a historic level. Uh, he's got a huge story. He's got the 10 wins, like... I think it would put he's got a solid legacy that I just think that people will be talking about for a while, especially I mean, it might be it's easier now that he's not, you know, Hakuo is not near him. You can't be like, mm-hmm. oh, 10 you shows. That's it. He has 40. Right. Yeah. So I think it does. It's been long enough. I think it can be like a separate legacy from that period. Yeah. And that's what you and I've talked about this before. And again, uh, Goose and JJ brought up the same thing, but like not. I don't say this to be rude, but it's going to be rude. Like, stop talking about Hakuho. Like, sometimes you're spoiled when you saw the greatest of all time, right? And and so if if you're a hockey fan and you grew up watching Wayne Gretzky, stop looking for it. It's not coming back. If you're a basketball fan and you grew up watching Michael Jordan, stop looking for it. Like, LeBron is probably the greatest. I don't know. But like in his era, what Michael, you know what I mean? Like those kind of things, like you can you can make all these weird arguments, but it just doesn't matter. Just stop. Yes. And I think... To feed into that, if Taran Fuji walked away now, I it's not at all like what was it twenty twenty two when Taran was out for like all those surgeries and like it was just random Megashira winning like it was just total Wild West. Mm-hmm. I think with the Ozeki you have the healthy Ozeki that you have, uh, I do think that they will kind of pop off because really the the barrier to them, which is fair to talk about, has been Taran Fuji for them really accelerating. Right. They can't before this, they they cannot beat him. Yeah. And honestly, I hadn't thought about it this way, but you're actually totally right. If I look at the stats, the only outlier uh in 2024, 2023 um is the fact that Takeru Fuji won March. Like Onosato won May as a Komosubi, so Sanyaku. But then if you look back at 2023, that's that's two Kirishima y- Yusho, a Hoshoryu Yusho, a Takakesho Yusho, two Takakesho Yushos, and a Tiruno Fuji. That's all Sanyaku victories, right? So while while things still still feel wide open, we might actually be done with that. We might be settled into um, this current Sanyaku. I think outside of maybe a few outliers of somebody just blowing up a bit of them, I do think that uh, I think the correct friend is itself and going kind of back, back, back to you look more normal. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's with Teru and these guys. So I think that leads to your point. One, again, like we're talking about, I think his record is unassailable. He's got his double digit U show. He probably won't retire. We'll see what that ends up looking like. Um but um 
the the fact that the Sanyaku are stepping up really, I think, gives credence to the other point that you made previously, like I was bringing up this idea that like, I think Koto Zakura and Hoshoryu are right there in the wings. And Kirishima should be too. But before before I move on to some other topics here, I do want to touch on Takanosho because this was awesome. The greatest smile in sumo, right? Falls short, fighting back the tears. Uh, the interview at the end, he's still got a smile, but like that's devastating. And it just kind of stinks like you were talking about. We've sort of self-corrected now and we're back in an era of Sanyaku winning, but it's tough because it feels like a guy who just barely missed the gravy train like you were mentioning when Tamawashi won his, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, and... <sighs> I am going to be honest with you. I, I've put too much faith in him in the past and gotten burned a few times. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was a one-off. Like, I think it was when we did Fantasy Sumo, March of 22. Yeah. He won, I believe, and then just tanked afterwards. It's rough. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because or he was in the running. Yeah. And did he finish runner-up in that one, too? I don't know. Oh, good question. Was it, was I'll it look Mar- it up while we're talking about it. Yeah, was it March, right? Because Teru won March of 21. I don't know. Like you said, it doesn't matter. Um, but uh, I still think that this is really exciting. Do you think he'll kick on? Because the last time I even brought this up with the Sunday morning sumo uh, show guys, but like there was that moment, I, I, I guess it was 2020, the beginning of 2021, like end of 2020, beginning of 2020. I, I don't exactly remember, but. Remember when Takanosho and Mitakeyumi were both Sekiwake? And it was like, all right, are these guys both going to push on for Ozeki? Mitakeyumi did, and he got Sekiwake. Takanosho, the rug, absolutely pulled out from under him and went tumbling down. Do you think he can kick on off of this massive record and make like a late career? Like, hey, I'm Ozeki for three tournaments and then I'm out of here. I would love that, but if I'm actually looking at the scores and being realistic, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. And we're going to talk about this in a second, or forget it. Let's let's shuffle some things around, because it's, it's interesting. Like, technically, his record is good enough. You could probably, like, make a case to, ar- like, push him all the way back to Sekiwake, skipping Komosubi, because he's been there before and stuff like that. But there is such a log jam at Sekiwake right now. And one of the reasons for that, so I'm just going to merge these two ideas, like, is is... Taka Keisho and Hirishima dropping out because of injuries. And Chris Sumo put out a video where apparently the Yokozuna Council is mooting the idea of bringing back these injury rank protections. I don't think it'll actually happen. I think they'll make a bunch of committees and sit around and talk about it and then nothing will change. Um, But so just to be a bad host and give you three questions at once, um, like, what do you think about this log jam at Sekiwake? What do you think about how injuries are impacting the Sanyaku and guys who are being forced to fight while not healthy are losing the Ozeki rank uh, and not able to reclaim it? Um, and uh, just in general, what do you think about can Takanosho get at all into the Sanyaku when it's so loaded? So actually, that's something I wanted to bring up because I have no idea how some of this is going to shake out. Like, here to Umi, Komasubi got 10 and 5. Normally, he'd be bumped up. But all the Sekewake at least broke even. Takakesho's going to drop down. They're not going to stick five Sekewake. There's... But I think Kom- I think Hiro to Umi's kind of getting screwed on this one. I do too. And it's funny, like, we were, we were just barely on the last day spared a double insult where if Daesha was nine and six at Komusubi, he would have had a case to go up as well. Um, so I think, I think, like you said, both those guys are going to get log jammed at Komusubi, which stinks for Kira Doumi. Um, but yeah, like, it's already going to be for Sekiwake. Takakesho has to be at Sekiwake. I, and everybody else just barely squeaked out enough where they also get to stay. So it, I don't remember I don't remember previously seeing a small Komusubi in such a huge Sekewake before, but maybe I'm just not thinking of it correctly, but it's interesting to see that that's the rank that got jammed up. Yeah, and and so I just don't know. Yeah, right, cuz normally like they don't mind at all having a couple layers of Ozeki's and stuff like that, but just like the way things have fallen, Onosato doesn't yet have the credentials for that. But now let's talk about this topic. Part of this is a, I think, a problem that they created themselves because they're the reason why Kirishima and Takakesho, two guys who just should be Ozeki's, are not going to be Ozeki's. 
That's their fault. That's the JSA's fault. Those guys, you shouldn't have this logjam at Sekiwake. So it's, I just, what I'm trying to point out is like, there's these knock-on effects. Not only is it injury and it's bad for those guys, but it's also screwing up stuff further down the line. Now we're talking about Hira Doumi having to stay at Komusubi after 10 and 5 and a special prize. At Kom- like, that's insane. Um, and they did this. They screwed this up. Well, yeah, and it's not even, the injury protection too would help. But it's also with the retirement system with Takakesha is basically just yes. floundering when he would have passed. Like we've touched on it before. You can look it up. He's one of he's one of the best Ozeki ever. And when the entire two years where Terra Fuji was in and out and Sumo was just in a really weird spot, he was the person consistently holding up the entire sport himself. And now he's in this terrible position where like his neck and his arm are all screwed up. He can barely fight, but he can't retire because they won't guarantee him an elder spot. And then he might just lose everything that he's worked for. Yeah. And again, like you're talking about Akake show just last year, 2023, won fully one third of the U shows available. That's enormous, right? Like, and, and you know what? Just to hammer home this point too, Hidishima did as well. Two thirds. Four of the six Yusho were won just last year by Takakesho and Kirishima, who are now, like, falling out of the... It's it's just insane. It's very frustrating. I understand that the last system was abused. And what, what sucks to me is this idea that, like, okay, well, we just have to take it away instead of trying to be creative and trying to work around that. I don't have a solution. I get that that's a really hard spot for the JSA to be in. But I just feel like the situation we're currently in is unacceptable. No, uh, I agree. Because uh, it's the Kirishima Takakesho falling out of Ozeki is so different than the Mitakeyumi Shodai. They right. fell out because they had crazy performances. It wasn't injuries. The Kirishima should be in Ozeki, but he just, his body's just breaking. <laughs> I know. And, and then, like, let him let him rest and then see if he can push on for another Yokozuna bid. Like there's a there's a better reality that we could be living in than the one that we are. Yeah, because I think if you have people like with what happened with Mataki Yumi, where it was, I don't know, mental, physical, just like it happened. If you gave him a chance to rest, like say they had claimed it was an injury, you come back, you're not you're not going to be able to consistently still hit just because you took like a little bit off versus an actual injury recovers. They come back and then you let them see was this was it the injury that was holding you back or was it you? you you'll find out really quickly. Yep. But uh, we don't live in that world currently. Hopefully they come up with something. Like I said, maybe we'll do an episode in the future covering it into something we've talked about in the past because I don't necessarily have a, a good solution that would both protect the wrestlers that we think deserve protecting, but also prevent people from taking advantage of it. That's the hard part. The second part's the hard part. Um, but now let's just we'll just put this behind us it'll it'll come up again in the future it's fine um but uh our picks uh let's touch on that so uh hoshoryu and kotozakura didn't happen but asanoyama looked good until his knee literally exploded and then wakataka kage actually did do well wakataka kage was only one win off the pace 11 wins it got a little rocky in the middle there like starting with that loss to kageyaki which i feel like shouldn't have happened because he's been fighting kageyaki and similar fighters in jurio um so of those four guys uh how are you feeling um well i guess to touch on the easy one i don't think asunyam was ever coming back i don't i know he's he's saying he's going to but like this was so mentally draining on him the last time when he had to go down and make the climb back up and and to do it again. But like we've always discussed, to be another year older and to have uh, this other injury to come back. And I that was legitimately I will describe it as gross watching his knee explode live on camera and having NHK play it again for me in slow motion like. You can watch his bones slide in different directions and see the twitching as as his tendons just explode in there. Yeah, that's not something that's like, oh, was ice it up and walk on it. Like unless maybe for some reason they just everything slid right back into place. But I feel like as we talked about with Phil, our friend who knows about these things, he's gonna have to take a few months off before he can even have the surgery, and then you have the surgery recovery time. 
Right. They need to wait for the swelling to go down before anyone can even get in there and mess with that. Like, and, and then, and then after you have the surgery, it's the same thing. You have to wait for it to get into a manageable position before you even start doing PT. I know that athletes have different medical staff available and different training regimens that they can do that can accelerate that process, but it's like a minimum six months. Right. And, and at that point he's fallen so far. I don't know. Um, and it sucks. It would be tough for him to even want to really slog through that again, just end up in the low mega shiras and then right. what? I mean, it's right. not like he's been, if he was like back up to F- Sanyaku, had been fighting super hard and consistently at that level, but he's been injuries in and out for months already. Yes, I, I totally agree. I think that he's going to make a good show of it. He'll do his rehab and his recovery, but I don't know that he's ever coming back. Um, and- Which is fair. He's had a great career. It's just yep. to the point where like this is a serious injury that nobody wants to have to watch him struggle back up again. Exactly. It's the story of sumo, like who who gets derailed by injuries and who manages to keep it going, um, which is why Wakataka Kage is interesting, right? Like the same ACL surgery and stuff like that. Now we talk about timing. Wakataka Kage was slightly younger than Asoyama is now when he got uh, his surgery and stuff like that. And, and you know, Wakataka Kage was making his first big comeback, not his second like Asanoyama. And also, Wakataka Kage carries less weight. The recovery process is easier when you're not overweight. That's what Phil talked about, like you said, in that episode we did on ACLs in Sumo. Um, but he feels like, oh, the first thing I would have done, even with Wakataka Kage, if I got him in my chair, is like, okay, before we actually work on any return to sport or any uh, physical rehab, you got to lose this weight because it's it's damaging your joints. Well, in Sumo, you can't do that. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're they're at the weight they are. They can't drop it and then hope to put back on the 30 pounds once you're recovered. Mm-hmm. And, and but Wakataka Kage has made this recovery. And so, I mean, do you feel like he's going to knock on now or do you think we're going to see a same a similar situation where basically the peak of his ceiling has been cut lower? I th- think that he's not going to. It's hard. So he didn't he did really well this time, but he didn't fight. I don't think any really like top level people this time. He's clearly better now. We can say than the bottom third for sure. Uh, like a loss to Shodai. He's lost to Shodai a billion times when Shodai was Ozeki. That's not a surprise, but like Ichi Yamamoto was a weird one. Yeah. I mean, we love Ichi. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's like just not who I expected I, to win that one. And and he lost to Takota Fuji who did not have a good tournament. I just don't see him knocking on Ozeki again. No, 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 no. I thought I thought he was barely I thought he was barely a contender for that the first time. Uh, you know, getting his his U show was the one thing that put him in there. And when he lost the opportunity to get it in that three three Basho stretch, I, I thought that was over. I think he I think the two Waka bros are going to be hovering in the upper mega Shiras is where I see it like the top one to three, I think, is a solid spot for them. I think I think even Komasubi's a little it's it's a lot more competitive than anything he's had to deal with in a while. Maybe he'll cruise through that. But I think there's gonna be enough out of an adjustment period that it, it's gonna cut his overall, I think, career. I totally uh I, I totally see where you're coming from there. And I feel like, yeah, like they will fight at both Walker Brothers will fight at Sekiwake and Komosubi levels. They'll they'll fight at that mm-hmm. level. Like they will be that good. I just don't know, like these log jams, like we're seeing, I just don't know if it'll happen. Like, again, Takanosho is probably going to come up to Komosubi. And yeah, but then we're going to have three Komosubis, four Sekiwakes, uh, two Ozekis, and a Yokozuna. Like, man, the idea of other people getting into that is bananas. Well, yeah. And even once that kind of jam slows down, it's going to start spitting down some really top level fighters into like those Mega Shira 1 2, which are going to be really difficult for anybody below that to fight it's a good point and i think we're we're seeing some of the stuff like wakamoto haru maybe still not completely healthy but went six and nine at m2 gono yama who we both think is really good and looks so good in all his losses but went five and ten at m3 atami fuji ever struggling up at the maigashiro one rank went seven and eight again so tough for this guy up there but that's the thing these are like elite wrestlers not breaking into it because of how good our sanyaku is right now and yeah, I think there's an opportunity with uh, maybe sure one through basically one through four other than Toby Zaru. Mm. There's going to be an exception where people can shoot up to the top, but you're still going to hit that the concrete wall of the Sanyaku. Oh, that's a great point. I mean, that's so obvious. I didn't think of it at all. Like, great, like 
Takanosho is going to make a rise up there, but he's doing it from M6 because he gets some of those padded fights down below. Not not that we don't love guys like the Sad Man or whatever, Sadanoumi, but like, you know, helps that he got to fight and beat Sadanoumi and didn't have to every single day be fighting the likes of Daisho and Hiradoumi. Yeah, I think that's going to make... It'll be interesting to see how it shakes out, but I think that's going to be... It's going to be a... God, anybody below... And the mega sure just top mega sure did not do well this time, so I think you're gonna you're gonna take some lower level people and they're gonna get hit hard. Yeah, yeah. I told maybe what we what we were seeing happen at Komasubi is now uh, shifting down to those high mega shiras. Um, what do you think though at the top of the Sanyaku? So Hoshoryu leaves with a hip injury. That's always scary. Uh, after knocking, he, it's so it's devastating. Hoshoryu eliminates Kotozakura from Yusho contention and then has to leave with a hip injury. But both of those guys, so nine wins and three days sitting out for Hoshoryu. Ten wins for Kotozakura, but he had that three day stretch where he lost to Kirishima, Hoshoryu, and Abi all in a row, which knocked him out of things. Um. How are you feeling about those guys at the top? I feel like Hoshori and Kotozakura are the... They stop each other from winning all the time. Mm. I think every tournament we're like, oh, Kotozakura's going to get Hoshori. And then they just they they fight each other, and then it ruins ruins their chances. And then the other one wasn't even in for it. Yeah. Uh, I do think an interesting thing is that Onosato's ninth win I just looked at was that one of his wins was the Fusencho against Hoshorio, who he doesn't beat. I think he would have been eight and seven if he had gone against Hoshorio, which is still interesting to see if they would have given him that special prize, which I think he barely, barely got. But yeah, right, right. Like, again, there's there's, I guess, a minimal amount of controversy around his special prize. But like, I don't know, you you beat the Yokozuna who also happened to be the Yusho winner. Like, I, you know. Yeah, I think it was just, it was really just his score. I think that threw me off on it where I'm like, oh, nine and six, he got it. But I'm like, so did Kotozakura, but Kotozakura did not mm-hmm. he, because he only got 10 and five at Ozeki. Yeah. And in my opinion, he's, he's bouncing back. He's going to be fine. Mm-hmm. What, what stinks for him, I guess, is, is the math. As you know, we talked about how in his first three tournaments, 11, 11, 12, and a U show, technically in his first three Makuchi tournaments, he had the stats for Ozeki, except those wins need to come when you're at Sanyaku level. Um, so mm. not a big thing, but now he's at 21 wins over two tournaments. So he will need to get 12 wins next tournament if he wants to get promoted to Ozeki. Um, you know, it's just that the nine makes that hard, right? He would have much, he would have been much happier with 10 or 11. But like you said, he might have been a hair's breadth away from eight. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll be interested to see if he can do it again. I mean, he beat Terran Fuji, which is a, that's a huge deal. Even if he's you know fighting an o, or a Yokozuna at you know sixty percent, nobody else got that. Or three, well, he was one of three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. And uh, like he's he's gonna bounce back. He's great. We know he's great. It's fine. Just things might slow down a little bit, but maybe not. I could easily see him getting twelve wins in September. It's you know, I mean, once he now has his head straight, like I said. You really can't overestimate the amount of like uh, additional uh, obligations you have after winning your first U show and all the like talk you have to go through. And, and and you know what? The same thing will happen to him when he gets to Ozeki. He'll have to do a massive press tour and we'll probably see him take a step back after that. But he will get to Ozeki, you know? Yeah, I mean, the same thing happened to all of them, except for it happened with Hoshoryu, it happened with Kirishima. Mm-hmm. It happens. Exactly. So. That's fine. Um, and then uh, other than so, I mean, we focused a lot on the top because that's where the stories are. Um, but this time around, as I look around, like thinking of Bonds K for next time, what's interesting to me is like Jurio wasn't great. Really, besides Shirokuma, who I think if he hadn't gotten that final 12th win and the U show would be looking at Jurio 1, wouldn't actually be looking at Makuuchi. Um, Onokatsu, who really collapsed the second half, but still did finish 9-6 and six from J1, so he's an easy lock to come up, and I think he deserves it, and I think uh, he's going to be really exciting at Makuuchi. Like, Onokatsu's going to be the real deal. I hope he knocks on. Um, but those two guys are pretty much it. Like, Shichi put up a good record with double-digit wins, but he was fighting from so low. Hakuoho put up a good 11-win tournament, but he was so low. Like, there are almost no Jurio candidates, but, like, Jurio Tomakuchi candidates, 
But I'm curious because there are probably like five guys who by the numbers maybe ought to drop out of Makuchi or a reasonable case could be made for them to drop out. The obvious contenders are Nishiki Fuji. Oh, man. Rip the Nishiki Fuji <laughs> hype train. I mean, I'm I'm still riding the train, but I'm covered in like soot from the coal and I'm like, it, it's bad. <laughs> I'm at the very end of that that train. <laughs> exactly. We're still on it, but it ain't it ain't no Nozomi Shinkansen, I tell you that much. Um so Nishiki Fuji's going down, but it's probably Chiyoshoma at five, five, and five, and now, you know, aggravated that back injury. But if if Asano Yama is out for six months and technically would have gone three and twelve, so a negative nine rating, like would would they spare Chiyoshoma and say, well, technically for the matches he fought, he fought at 500. We'll keep him like at M17 and dump Asanoyama because we know he's going down anyway. Or if we're talking about that, technically uh, Takayasu and Onosho with those injury pullouts could technically qualify to be dropped to Jurio, uh, which just again, talking again about our injury, injury protection stuff like this. These are not questions that should be asked, and I am uh, totally willing for you to just tell me, Rick, shut up, that's stupid. Um, like, by the numbers, like, what are we, are there five guys who should go down? Like, what What do you think is happening here with this Jurio Makuchi split? Like, for promotions. I, I do think that you have plenty of people who, like you said, by the numbers could drop out of Makuchi, but if Jurio just didn't do that well, I don't know that there's going to be a hard push for it, which might be super lucky for some of these people like Takayasu might barely make the cut uh, just because they're like oh well we really only need to drop we only want one maybe two and then there's the rest they're, they're kind of neutral on I don't think they'll make a hard push and cut a bunch yeah the one I'm super curious about is will will they will they I'm with you like Onosho and Takayasu I don't think are actually considerations I'm just like pointing it out as as an expression of my frustration um but like Chiyoshoma and Asanoyama. One guy is getting spared. Whichever one doesn't is going to feel aggrieved. Who are they sparing and who are they dumping? Because I do think Shirokuma and Onokatsu are both coming up. Uh, honestly, it would make the most sense with Asanoyama because you know he's just not... Like, he's not coming back anytime soon. Yeah, and we don't think he's coming So it's back like maybe Chiyoshoma just gets lucky with that. But at the same time, they're like, will they have like... Basically, the respect that the JSA has for Asunyama, will that interfere? <laughs> yeah, Res- respect now, not respect a couple years ago. But yeah, I'm totally with you. Um, and like, because with Asunyama, if they look at it of like, what did you do on the dohyo? Chiyo Shoma legitimately lost five matches on the dohyo. Asunyama technically didn't legitimately lose anything. When he lost to Ichi Yamamoto, again, it's because his knee exploded. He won. He was three and zero, oh and 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 your your pick of him as the dark horse to win this U show looked stellar. Yeah, I. Or maybe they go crazy. They drop all of them, and they just cut a little short. And yeah, right. And wait, maybe maybe we just have true chaos. We have nineteen Sekiwakes, and we have <laughs> everybody gets Sekiwake. <laughs> This is going to be perfect. Um, yeah, I'll be interested to see what happens in the Spawn's Cave, but this one more than most, I feel like I really don't know. I, it's minimal storylines or whatever, but the ones that exist are are very confusing to me. I don't have a good beat on them, so I'm interested to see that. And then we'll just wrap up here. So like you and I spent, uh, I'll, I'll say it, we just wasted a lot of time talking about these Makuuchi and Jurio guys because everybody knows the future of Sumo, the only guy we ought to be talking about is Aonishki, the Ukrainian sensation. But six and one in Makuuchi. So again, kind of slow rolling. These are great records, um, but he will probably be fighting in Makushta again next Basho. Um, but traditionally you have said that you're in favor of that getting more seasoning and stuff and going up what's what's your current temperature what's your current pulse on our beloved Aonishki I'm still honestly in the same like oh he's lost in let's see five tournaments he's lost three times yeah. that's a crazy record even at that level hmm. and I I like that he's taking the losses and still just absolutely grinding through the rest of the tournament like this one he lost his third match and then won the next four it's a great point yes you know what i didn't even think about that because previously the last time when you had mentioned this was when he was on his undefeated streak 
Um, and you had said that you liked, uh, th- that you wanted him to hit a win and bounce back or whatever. And he did, but uh, I believe in that tournament, uh, his last, his, his last fight, his loss was at the end. So he had won six straight. And then that, so now like you're saying, this is a mid, a mid Basho bounce back. That's, that's actually interesting. Yeah. And it's, it makes me feel much more confident about them that they can be like, oh, I lost grind through the rest, but I like seeing I don't mind a slower rise for him. It's the same as what we saw with Kota Zakara when he was coming up. There were probably a few times where he could have been jetpacked, where they could have just like pulled it, like, let's just go. But he ground his way up and now he's solid. He's so solid. He's got more experience than most people. And it just, it just adds to your performance versus I think it's not fair to jetpack them and then throw them in a situation where they just get absolutely obliterated. Right. Yeah, we've we've seen the jetpack destroy many a rikishi. And again, uh, like you're talking about with seasoning, like Aonishiki is he just turned 20 in March and he's only been fighting professional sumo. He hasn't even got a full Honbashu's worth of uh, tournaments under his belt. He just completed his fifth tournament. So this is this is still stellar. And, and even his this... loss. Oh, you go first. I'll say this year, just in 2024, that puts him at 25 and three. Yeah, bananas. And his his one loss came to Hitoshi, a uh, former Jurio fighter. So he has been Sekitori. He has been salaried. And Hitoshi had a great tournament. He went six and one. Um, so even like those fights, these are and these these are the fights we probably want Aonishiki getting some practice with at Makushita so that he kind of knows what that level is. We've talked before. There's a big step up going from Makushita to Jurio in large part because you fight every day instead of half the days, um, but also in this caliber of fighters. And then there's another big step up switching from Jurio to uh, Makuchi, where you have a more uh, wide diversity of fighting styles and stuff like that, which can be tough. But like all of his losses, his three, <laughs> all three of them are like these are two good young wrestlers like he to- well, Hitoshi. I mean, Hitoshi's still only like 27 or something like that, but Hitoshi, Kusano, Nagamura, he has lost to good fighters, and he's kind of still, he's he's beating good fighters too, you know? Um, that Dewa Noryu he beat on the last day, who has had some good basho. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, man. So... And now we're just waiting for him to rise up to the top and be the next Yokozuna. Exactly. This is, it's it's obviously going to happen. Um, and uh, no one can tell us otherwise. Uh, by the way, don't look at this train that I happen to be riding into a canyon uh, with Nishiki Fuji as the conductor. <laughs> Do I almost always choose wrong? Yes. But this time it's different and I'm just going to plug my ears when people tell me otherwise. Exactly. Nana nana boo boo. I can't hear you. <laughs> uh, all right. But other than that, great Basho. Super happy to see Teru get 10. Very excited to see what comes in the future. Sumo is Sumo still has a bright future. And uh, obviously, uh, Aonishiki being the brightest of it. But whatever happens, we're uh, set in for another exciting tournament in September. So with that, thanks for listening, everybody. And we'll talk to you again soon. <laughs>